David Patterson served as the 55th governor of New York from the resignation of Elliot Spitzer in 2008 until he walked away from the job, or some would say was pushed, at the end of 2010. But it's easy to forget that before becoming governor, Patterson had had a role in state government starting in 1985 when he joined the state Senate. And that is a ton of insight and experience into how the Empire State works. And he shared some of that insight and experience with our own Dominic Carter. Dom? Well, Andrew, the governor's official portrait was unveiled over the weekend in Albany. Today, we met with him in Harlem. Now, there are some in political circles that believe if Patterson had just appointed Caroline Kennedy to the U.S. Senate, pleasing President Obama, that Patterson would still be the governor today. We talked about Caroline Kennedy, and Patterson also has a few kind words for Rob Astorino. It's so nice to see you tonight, Governor Patterson. Well, thank you. It's great to see you, Dominic. And I dare say you have interviewed me as much as anyone else uh, over the years, maybe with the exception of Fred Dicker. We'll have to count him up one day. Well, thank you, Governor. But let's go ahead and get to the issues. Let's start with the news of the day, if you will, and that's Republican County Executive, as you know, someone you know very well, Rob Astorino running for governor. If you will, Governor, take off your partisan hat and assess Mr. Astorino as a candidate. Rob Astorino is a very bright man. He's a great talk show host. He's one of those who did talk radio before he went into government. And I think he's a little bit better talk radio show host than me. I'm a little jealous of him. But he knows all the issues. He's not a Republican that's going to strike fear into the hearts of Democrats. But he's not going to win this election. And I know there's a poll out that says Governor Cuomo's favorability is 42%. <clears throat> I think that's just people's general dissatisfaction with government. Everybody's poll numbers are down. But you cannot take away from Governor Cuomo the lowering of taxes, the lowering of taxes for business, marriage equality, a new pension tier, tier six pension reform, education reform, support for the charter schools, 500, $500 million support for the public schools. I could go on and on. He's lowered the temperature of discord in Albany, passed every budget on time. I see him as an overwhelming victor this year. So, Governor Patterson, you believe Mr. Astorino can be governor of New York, just not now, up against Andrew Cuomo? One day, I think he's got all the tools to become a governor. Right now, I would, if I were him, I would stick with talk radio. But, Governor Patterson, Mr. Astorino came just this morning to the heart of the Bronx, Democratic country. Well, I gave him credit. He's a very smart man. If you're running as a Republican, the best way to get attention is to go into a stronghold of democratic support and let people know that you'll be inclusive and that you'll represent all the people. And I think that, that he will handle himself with that same positive decorum through the campaign. I, I like him very much. But he's running against a man who's done some things that haven't been done in this state in 50 years. He lowered taxes to a rate lower than existed before Governor Cuomo was born, and that was 60 years ago. He passed three straight budgets on time. I don't think that's been done since the Peloponnesian Wars. I'm just saying there's a difference between good and great. Um, the future will tell what Mr. Astorino, Mr. Astorino can be. But right now, Governor Cuomo has been great. Governor Patterson, would you agree with this assessment? If you had appointed Caroline Kennedy to the Senate, you would still be the governor of New York. Well, then I guess it's clear that I would never be the governor of New York today because Caroline Kennedy dropped out of consideration a couple of days before I made a choice. So um, I never got to consider her among the other candidates I considered. Uh, the winner, I think, has been excellent in spite of what uh, was said at the time, Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, governor, why did you pass on Caroline Kennedy and how close did you come to appointing her? You know, I really don't know because by the time I, I made a final decision, what I really liked about Senator Gillibrand was she was an upstater. She was, would become the youngest U.S. senator in a, right after a year when young people finally voted. They got the constitutional amendment changed in 1972, but young people had not gone to the polls until the 2008 election. So I thought that was a good thing to represent. And she was, of course, a, a woman like um, Hillary Clinton and only 15 other women were serving in the Senate at the time, and that's not nearly 
the representation that we should have. So she, in addition, indisputably understands the economy as well as any other U.S. senator right now and did then. And that's why I appointed her. Governor Patterson, the conventional wisdom uh, at the time said, uh, Elliot Spitzer puts you on his ticket as lieutenant governor. Hillary Clinton's running for president. She's elected president, leaving an open Senate seat, and, and Spitzer appoints you to the U.S. Senate. So why didn't you just appoint yourself to that Senate seat to begin with? Well, conventional wisdom was right insofar as what perhaps the overall plan was when I came to run with Governor Spitzer, but the Senate was deadlocked to the point that only in the last days before Majority Leader Malcolm Smith was sworn in in 2009 was that resolved because remember they had those three uh, senators, what they call themselves, the three amigos, and now they're known as the three inmates because they're all in prison. They were bouncing back and forth like tennis balls at Wimbledon trying to get the best deal from the Republicans and the Democrats. And later on that year, they, two of them actually moved over and became Republicans. One became the majority leader of the Republican conference because he switched his vote um, and became a, a Republican that year. I knew that they were sitting back waiting for an opportunity to, to wreak more havoc on the state with what they call reform, but was really corruption. And I was not going to let them get a chance at controlling who was going to become the next governor, because if I appointed myself to the U.S. Senate, the majority leader of the Senate, since there was no lieutenant governor, would become the acting governor. And I thought they would be right back in the thick of it and would probably be billionaires by the time that resulted. And I wasn't going to allow that corruption to take place. And that's also why when they did finally do it in deadlocking the Senate later that year, I appointed a lieutenant governor and in spite of a vast public dicta that I wouldn't be able to sustain that appointment, the Court of Appeals upheld my decision. Well, you know, as many times as we've talked about David Patterson and that Senate appointment, I never really considered what would have happened if he had appointed himself and there wouldn't have been a governor or a lieutenant governor. The thought that the majority leader of the Senate would have taken over, very interesting. I, I'm curious, Scott, it, clearly Governor Patterson looks like he's enjoying being out of the executive office. Something, again, the smile on your face gives me the feeling you might be doing the same thing. How do you think history is going to look back on David Patterson's time as governor? Well, it was a very tumultuous time, if we recall. I mean, it really was crazy, the whole thing with Spitzer. And he kind of came in there, uh, he made a joke um, before, as he was elected lieutenant governor, he said, all I do is I call up every morning and make sure the governor is still there, and right. then I go back to sleep, or something close <laughs> to that. <laughs> you know? um, but one day he wasn't there, and, and, uh, and he had to be governor. And I think he was overwhelming, um, but you're right, I think, you know, if you go back and look at what's happened since and look at some of the background, uh, he, that decision, even though it took a long time to make, uh, was very critical in terms of the New York State government operations. Mike, what goes through, what goes through your mind when you think well, David Patterson? I think of uh, David Patterson stepped into a completely untenable circumstance by the recklessness of his governor uh, and the man whose failures put him into office. Uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Um, and in the aftermath of the collapse of Elliot Spitzer um, and the things in which he did that led to that collapse, you know, Patterson, who um, was uh, not exactly, as I understood it, part of the day-to-day -day operations of the mm -hmm. state under Elliot Spitzer, gets thrown this massive responsibility. Uh, at the same time, in the course of uh, his unelected term, Hillary Clinton <laughs> gets appointed as Secretary of State, and now he's got an open Senate seat on his hands. Uh, he is dealing with a press corps that he never had to deal with in a consequential way before. Um, he decided to be a little forthright about some of his personal failings. Um, and I just think this confluence of events and just this sort of appetite for, wow, New York really has hit an all-time low <laughs> in the aftermath of Elliot Spitzer. He unfortunately, um, and I guess fortunate he became the governor, unfortunately that he had to sort of be responsible for this mess that he did not create and the circumstances that were not his to begin with. Uh, you know, there were some mistakes that he made. Yeah. Um, perhaps he was too frank with the public about some of his personal uh, problems. Um, and that's a point I made to him privately. I normally don't reveal <laughs> what we talk about privately, but 
I did ask him, yeah. Governor, why do you need to tell us every detail about your personal life? Yeah, yeah well, life? look, you can't, you can't blame the guy. The, the yeah. guy who had the job before him, <laughs> look what happened. I mean, that guy's <laughs> personal life was a mess. Uh, you know, this, but uh, Patterson's problems were nothing compared to but, what but we saw. But his greatest asset is his personality. Yes. Yes. Uh, his greatest asset yes. is who he is. Yes. And, and he was sort of working on that basis. He's an affable, funny uh, intelligent guy, and he was just being out there. <clears throat> he'll get he'll get bad marks for administration, uh, but I think in the end, people remember him as being likable. You know, it's funny to, that you say that, Andrew. I just want to make this quick story. Uh, one time when I interviewed Governor Patterson, and it was on live television, and I wanted to crawl under the table and die with his reaction because I knew the moment he said it. It, it, the tape ended up being on David Letterman's show. So that, that's how much I knew he had stepped in it. You, you mentioned his personality. It's true. He's a, he's a type of guy. You, he's very funny, likable, but he's, uh, he's very honest. And I asked him on live television about past alleged drug use. Yeah. And the governor of the state of New York, the brand new governor, said, yes, I've, I've tried drugs. And I... I expected for him to duck the question or not answer and I didn't know what to do once he admitted that he had tried cocaine before. You gotta stop asking these questions. Yeah, gotta stop <laughs> <laughs> With the president last week admitting that he that he used to get high, I mean it may it may be it, maybe the time and place, and maybe the time and place around different. when he took Look, over. I, I think one of the, you know, I'm not going to give George Bush a lot of George W. Bush a lot of credit, but the one thing I give him a lot of credit for was the way he handled that question. Um, you know, he never answered the question, but he was very clear. He wasn't going to lie to you either. He just said, "Look, when I did irresponsible things, I did irresponsible things." And that's what I was you know, expecting. And, and that's the kind of thing. Uh, you know, you, on one hand, the public wants their politicians to just be forthright and honest, mm -hmm. and David Patterson was to the nth degree. Uh, and sometimes, you know, less said is better. <laughs> He's not a fan. Of, I know you have to go to break. He is not a fan of President Obama's, and we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. He feels that President Obama has sold out a number of African American elected You know what, Dominic? I'm going to tune in for that tomorrow night, because that <laughs> sounds like TV I'm going to want to watch. Uh, we're going to take a break talk CPAC next. Stay with us. <laughs>